Hi there, and welcome to Moving Kentucky Forward. I'm Bruce Maples, publisher of Forward Kentucky, and today we're going to be talking with Sierra Enlow, who is running for Ag Commissioner for the state in the upcoming election. I ask her about her background and about why she's running and what she's going to bring to the table as Ag Commissioner that might be different from her opponent. Before we watch it, let me urge you to hit the subscribe button down below so that you get all of our updates for Moving Kentucky Forward and our other channels. And if you like this video or any of our videos, please click the like button as well. So let's hear from Sierra Enlow. So we're here today with Sierra Enlow, who is running for Agriculture Commissioner of the State of Kentucky. Sierra, welcome to Moving Kentucky Forward. Thank you, Bruce, for having me. Certainly glad to be here today and to talk to all of your listeners and viewers. Um, this is, you know, a very exciting race and we're very close to the end. Yes, we are. And I have to say, I have just been so impressed with your background and the resume that you're bringing to this race. But for the sake of our viewers and listeners, why don't you bullet out your background so they know about you? Sure. I grew up on a fifth generation farm in Larue County, started pulling tobacco plants at five years old um, mm -hmm. and working on that farm. Continued that work through 4-H and FFA, showing livestock and working on different projects, and then attended the University of Kentucky College of Agriculture, where I did my master's degree in agricultural economics while working for Cooperative Extension and the USDA. Um, I always start with those bullet points because I tell everyone that there are two things to a good commissioner of agriculture, having production agricultural experience and business experience. Mm -hmm. And since my work in Cooperative Extension in the USDA with the College of Agriculture, I've worked in economic development and worked very exclusively on bringing in industrial developments to different locations across the country. Um, and that work is really important to the future of the Office of the Commissioner of Agriculture. Um, this office really is not about helping and telling farmers how to farm. It is truly about how we get farm products from the farm gate and into these corporate supply chains. And I'm looking forward to bringing those new markets and new opportunities for Kentucky farmers. So with a resume like that, I pretty much assume you could get any job you wanted pretty much anywhere uh, because it's certainly an impressive resume. So why run for agriculture commissioner, a position that most Kentuckians don't even know exists? Yeah, and I mean, I think it's really that growing that aspect of growing up in a rural community and knowing how important it is to bring good leadership to communities across Kentucky and wanting to serve those people that helped me succeed. Um, you know, this is I shouldn't I certainly couldn't have gotten to the place that I am in my career without every community member in Lurie County, um, without the family that's part of the College of Agriculture. And this is a great opportunity to be able to bring that expertise that they helped facilitate back to them and allow me to serve in this capacity, in this role. And, and that's important, right? This office is truly about public service. It's not about, you know, building, uh, you know, running for the next office and building your political resume. If there's any job that's more public service than any other position in the state of Kentucky, it certainly is your ag commissioner. Hmm. Um we have had a, a struggle to get this interview scheduled because your uh, scheduling person just continually says, well, it, we're just busy, busy, you know, we don't have time. So obviously you're campaigning. Uh, tell us about all the stuff you're doing on the campaign trail. Yeah. And I mean, it's not just that I'm campaigning. I'm still working full time while running mm. this race because this is not a race that we can pay ourselves a salary as candidates. I do have to think about how I'm protecting my future. And um, so, I mean, in between serving my clients and then serving the state and meeting with people across the state, mm. um, we've been taking a pretty aggressive schedule for what our campaign schedule looks like. And um, that means that, you know, my days start bright and early at seven in the morning, usually. And they usually go until 1130 or midnight, a lot mm. of nights. Um just because we're crisscrossing the state and we're making sure that we're showing up for not only Kentucky agriculture audiences, but audiences all across the state that may not have had exposure to this race and may not understand why they need to vote for a commissioner of agriculture. Mm -hmm. um, 
it honestly, again, it's a race that's based on public service and people need to know that their ag commissioner candidate is going to show up on the campaign trail and that they're going to show up when they're in the office as well. So I've, I've had a few people talk about being out on the campaign trail across the state. And of course, this is basically a very red state uh, for most part. And yet they said that they've had some people come up to them and say, you know, I normally vote Republican, but this year I'm voting for you. Have you had that uh, experience out on the campaign trail? Absolutely. And I mean, it's also something that I have a lot of Republican friends and I know a lot of people in rural communities because I've done a lot of work in rural communities. Mm-hmm. I've been very intentional about even calling my Republican friends to ask for their support, uh, make sure that they know my vision for the office and why I'm running and why they should cross over and not vote straight ticket Republican in this race. Um, the other aspect of that is that Andy Brashear is a very popular governor and a very competent governor. And, I, you know, having him run at the top of the ticket and the amount of celebrity he brings to this race mm-hmm. uh, is just really phenomenal. And it's not like anything I've seen on the campaign trail um, in any of the other campaigns that I've worked on from a statewide perspective. And, and I mean, it really is remarkable. And they are running a very professional operation. It looks very much like a presidential campaign. There's a lot of work and a lot of um, a lot of thought that's gone into this race for Andy. Mm. Um, so I, I realize that you don't necessarily want to be uh, disparaging, but if you were going to do a bullet list of comparison with yourself and your opponent, uh, what would you say are some of the major differences between you and Mr. Shell? Yeah, and this is certainly a question I can handle like a lady. My grandmother taught me well as a Southern lady. Um, and it's, you know, it is easy to make those comparisons and to talk about where I am bringing strength to this race and my opponent maybe lacks the expertise for it. And it really does start with those two things that you need as a successful commissioner of agriculture. Again, production agriculture experience and business experience. Mm-hmm. And my opponent really is only bringing that production agriculture experience to the conversation. Um, And it really continues in the fact that he just hasn't shown up for things. And uh, that's something that Kentucky voters and Kentucky farmers and members of the agriculture community have taken note of and will continue to take note um, because my opponent is here to phone in this race. um, And he has. He thinks that there are enough straight ticket Republican voters that he doesn't have to work on the campaign trail. And you've seen that with him not showing up for the KAT debate. Um, I was down in Somerset, which is typically (laughs) enemy territory for a Democrat last week, um, and my opponent didn't bother to show up for the Women in Agriculture Conference. Um, He was 20 minutes late to the Black Farmer Conference, and that's the type of commissioner candidate that is truly phoning this in and is not concerned about all Kentuckians in this race. I think that's interesting because uh, your race isn't the only place where I've heard that comment, uh, Mm -hmm. where it seems that some of the Republican candidates think that they've got it in the bag and they don't need to actually get out and campaign. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned going to these conferences. Um, How have you been received at those conferences? Yeah, I've honestly been received better than I thought I would be at the conferences. Uh, And I had assumed walking into this race that this was going to be a tough race as a Democrat female candidate for commissioner of agriculture. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just, And then also I'm talking about things that are not traditionally what this office talks about. Um, And so I did anticipate that it was going to be tough to walk into those audiences and that I was going to have to really think about how I presented my message to them. Uh, But honestly, the reception has been a lot more positive than I thought it would be. Um, And I've been really proud of the work that rural Kentucky has put into this race, not just for myself, but for everyone else on the ticket. Um, and I mean, it is remarkable when you drive around the state of Kentucky and you see the number of Andy Brashear sides and you see the amount of support and engagement for the race this fall. Um, and that's something that, you know, we typically talk about in Kentucky of being a fallback of having off year elections is that we don't see that type of engagement. And we definitely mm-hmm. are specifically on the Democrat side, this election cycle. So what are the issues that you're hearing about? when you go out on the campaign trail, what are people coming to you and talking about? What do they want you to focus on? Yeah, and it differs. Um, And the Commissioner of Agriculture Office covers so many things in politics that you have to think about how you're really segmenting your message and talking to different audiences. 
Um, a lot of farmers are really concerned about what the markets are going to look like for their crops and their products and how we're helping facilitate that and whether or not we're doing that at the speed of business. Um, and that's something that, you know, as a good ag commissioner with business experience, I'm looking forward to bringing to this particular audience. And then a lot of non-agriculture audiences. And I mean, it's true um, for rural and urban, um, but they're very concerned about food access across the state of Kentucky and whether or not um, we are getting more grocery stores into different parts of the state. And this isn't just a, in, you, you know, a lot, I spend a lot of my business life in Louisville and it's a big conversation for West Louisville and depressed neighborhoods in Louisville. Um, but it's truly a conversation all across the state. Um, there are counties like Trimble County that only have $2 general stores and no grocery store. Mm. Um, you have counties like Madison County, where the grocery stores are mostly within the city limits of Richmond and not serving the rest of the county. Um, so it's really going to be an issue that your ag commissioner should work on. Um, and it's a big issue for feeding Kentucky and how we're distributing um, food to our food insecure population in the state of Kentucky as well. Um, so it's really, you know, it's a broad office and there are a lot of things this office does, um, but it does serve every Kentuckian. And I, I'm really working hard to make sure that people know that there's a reason that every Kentuckian votes for this race. And it's because it, the office truly does touch every Kentuckian. Well, that's, that's interesting because you gave me a perspective on the office that I didn't have. I would never have associated food access and grocery stores with the ag commissioner. So thank you for putting that in there. Uh, uh -huh. when you're, when you're out talking to people, does, and if you've read our site, you know, that I have a, or we have a very strong interest in the climate crisis. Are mm -hmm. you having any conversations about that with people in the state? Yeah. And it typically comes in a different framework than most of your viewers probably have understood the climate crisis. Um, in Kentucky, the climate crisis really affects Kentucky farmers it, um, in the context that it really hurts our ability to get our crops to the market. Um, so when you start to think about abnormal rainfall patterns and droughts, that impacts transportation on the Mississippi River. It impacts mm. our infrastructure system. It impacts, you know, what our water um, looks like across the state. And those are really important issues for Kentucky farmers on how we get Kentucky crops, for example, to the to New Orleans and the port there, um, and making sure that we have that ability to actually use the Mississippi River as an asset. And so it looks a little bit different in the agriculture space when we're talking about climate change, because we're talking about infrastructure issues when we're talking about climate change. Mm. I, uh, I continue to be frustrated with the idea that a lot of farmers, it seems to me, in West Kentucky are not planning ahead for the fact that, like you said, rainfall and drought. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's like we're going to have to farm like Egypt, you know, when it rains, we're going to have to have somewhere to put it. Uh, so yeah. we can use it later. And uh, I do want ahead. to give those farmers credit because agriculture is in in a lot of ways, an inherently sustainable industry because every farmer in Western Kentucky is concerned about how they're passing this farm to the next generation. And they are very concerned about how those farming techniques are going to change and how we are planning for the future. Um, it just looks more scientific based. It looks, you know, the conversation, the vocabulary terms that they use are different. Mm -hmm. um, so it does come across in some ways that that they're that the message is not being heard by them when it is actually very much being heard and very much being felt and planned for. And that's honestly, again, another point that I like to make in this race is that you need an ag commissioner that knows how to code switch between different audiences and knows how to talk to different audiences and explain the values of these audiences because they are the same values and they're just expressed in different terms. And that's something that we haven't had in Kentucky. And that's part of the reason that we still talk about a rural and urban divide, mm -hmm. uh, just because we haven't had someone that can help connect the dots across the conversations. Um, because again, those are the same dots. They just need to be talked about in different terms and different contexts. I want to congratulate you on all of the, of, of all of the people I have ever interviewed. You are the first person to use the term code switch. So that's, <laughs> that's excellent. Um, one last question on on these sort of policy things. Um, yeah. Our current commissioner, if I'm remembering correctly, had a real bee in his bonnet around hemp. Uh, uh -huh. Is that 
out on the field? Do you hear people talking about that as well? Um, I certainly hear people talking about him. It has not been with a lot of success. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I think that we're going to have to talk about um, as your next commissioner of agriculture. I've been really adamant on the campaign trail that we have to have a market in place before we signal to Kentucky farmers to raise a crop. Um, We just can't keep selling Kentucky farmers fairy tales of what could be in the future without showing them what is already an opportunity for them. One of the great examples that we have for this in Kentucky, and I'm really excited to see where the next year takes us, Um, We obviously have a very strong bourbon industry in Kentucky, and rye is a component of bourbon, but we've not typically raised rye in Kentucky. Um, We have four rye test plots in Kentucky, and we have four farmers that are really testing out the viability of that this year. And Mm -hmm. so I think that that's something that, you know, and that's a perfect example of something that we have a market for, and we want to start building our agriculture supply chain to meet that existing market. Excellent. Um, So... Are there any questions that I haven't asked you or topics I haven't brought up that you really wanted to talk about? Sure. Yeah. I always want to make sure that I'm telling people how they can help this race and how they can get engaged. And this is typically a race that progressive voters have forgotten about across the state of Kentucky. Mm-hmm. So I want to make I, I want to make sure that I'm giving people some talking points and making sure that I'm telling them what they can do to help the race in the last couple of weeks. And really, this race is going to make sure that people know that they need to vote for the Commissioner of Agriculture and that they have a great candidate for it. So I'm asking everyone to call 10 or 20 of their friends and let them know how excited they are about my candidacy for the Commissioner of Agriculture race, Um, because it's something that even if you're a farmer, um, you need to make sure that you understand who is helping influence policy for this. And that's something that a lot of people just typically don't think about. We think about voting for the governor and the lieutenant governor, um, but we don't think about the the importance of this role and actually helping Kentuckians across the state. And it's something that the more people can help me get that message out, the stronger that this role is going to be in the future and the better that as Kentuckians, we can help meet each other's needs in our communities. So and there's a question I always use when I interview candidates. And uh, so I'm all, I always conclude with this question. So let's imagine you're not doing door to door knocking because of the type of state it is, but let's just imagine that you were and you've knocked on my front door and I have opened the door and you're standing on my porch and I say, OK, why should I vote for you? What's your answer? Yeah. And I mean, it's really that education portion we've talked about across the interview that this isn't just this office just isn't about farmers in Kentucky. It is truly about every Kentuckian. And this office has a lot of space to help every Kentuckian. And and that I always start the conversation with that and then move into, you know, I had the experience to be a good public servant. I had the, you know, the willpower in the background to bring that experience Um, to Kentuckians. And I would hope that every Kentuckian understands that I'm bringing a a new level of serious and expertise to this office. um, And I get to share that with them in that doorstep conversation. Sierra Enlow running for agriculture commissioner, one of the strongest candidates I have ever interviewed. I am (laughs) very excited for your race. Uh, I will call 10 or 20 of my friends and tell them, you know, get to the bottom of the ticket and be sure you vote for Ag Commissioner. Uh, Sierra, thank you so much for joining us and good luck. Well, thank you for having me. And I'm certainly glad that I got the opportunity to speak to your viewers. Um, Even though it took us a little while to schedule this interview, I'm glad that we got we're able to fit it in before the election. Good. Take care. And uh, I'm really pulling for you. Well, thank you. Bye. That was Sierra Enlow, the Democrat running for the Ag Commissioner position here in the state of Kentucky. She is one of the most impressive candidates I've ever interviewed and has a wonderful background for this role. As she said, she brings both the farming production experience and the business experience. I hope you will get out and vote for her, and I hope you'll vote for the entire Democratic candidate. As this is true of every position, the Democrats are demonstrably better than the Republicans. Once again, I want to remind you, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to the channel by hitting the subscribe button down below. If you're listening to us on the podcast or on the website, uh, you can subscribe to the podcast using any of your uh, favorite podcast apps. 
And be sure to check out the website forwardky.com for many more stories and resources. Thanks again for watching and listening, and we'll see you next week.